Hello everyone, my name is Steve. I'm here to give you a quick demo of this application I made called Typeo. Typeo is something I put together real quick to serve a need for those of us who provide training specifically in the area of application development. Why, why would I make that? Well, um, I personally believe that uh, when you're providing instruction in the area of application development, as you're discussing code to the students and demoing it, if they can actually see the code being written in front of them, it helps sink in a little better versus just a copy and paste routine or a canned presentation of code being uh, written and, and compiled before and after. Just the live you know, typing and execution of code I think is kind of powerful. So Typeo helps the instructor do that. Also, for those of us people that don't type well, uh, or especially li live in front of an audience, Typeo does the work for you. You don't have to worry about all the mistakes and such. And, uh, you know, it just, it just helps the instructor out. Okay, I'm going to give a quick demo of here of how to use Typeo. One of the first things you'll notice is when you launch Typeo, you'll get a UAC warning message. And I made Typeo require elevated privileges because some process processes will not allow themselves to be accessed unless you have elevated privileges. For instance, Visual Studio will not allow Typeo to send text to it uh, unless you have elevated privileges. Other applications like Notepad and Word uh, do not require elevated privileges. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do with Typeo is paste some text into a tab. This is the basic thing that Typeo does is you put text in a tab and you send it to an application. So you can have one or more tabs. Also note that you can change Typeo's uh, window size to fit whatever dimensions you want. I'm going to double click on the tab and change the name of the tab to Hello World. And we'll go ahead and send it to uh, Visual Studio Express Edition for 2012. Recommended way to send text is to use your function keys, though I could just click this type button here. But I want to make sure that my application is ready. And to make best use of Typeo, you want to keep one window open at a time. Typeo will send text to the most recently opened non-minimized window. So if you have multiple windows that aren't minimized, it's going to send the text to the most recently opened one. So obviously, to keep life simple for you, just have one window open at a time when you're using Typeo, if at all possible. So I have Visual Studio open. I'm going to go ahead and hit F3 and let the fun begin. As you can see, everything is getting typed in as if it was a human, and the corresponding uh, IntelliSense and uh, code completion will kick in if you have it enabled. One thing to note, I can hit F9 here at any time and pause the typing and I just hit F9 again to resume it. So if you want to interject some notes in your instruction that's a, a good way of doing it. I can also use the F7 key which will stop the typing altogether and basically start over. So F7 works well if you you know uh, get in a jam like a, a window pops open that comes open unexpectedly because once Typeo starts typing, if another window becomes active in front of it, it will attempt to send the text to that application. So because it is now the top window. So F7 will stop all typing and let you correct the situation. So to utilize the different settings in Typeo, um, we have some menus here. Note the audio enabled. If you don't want to hear the clicking sounds, go ahead and unselect this. Um, you know, I guess if, <laughs> if you want to give the illusion that you're typing, the audio, you know, can help. Typing configuration will launch the settings window, and I'll briefly discuss what each one of these is. 
keystroke delay is the average time between a key press. So this is the ultimate gauge of how fast you know it appears that TypeGo is typing. I'll go ahead and set this down to its lowest setting, which is 20 milliseconds. Word delay is the amount of time in between words being typed on average. So set that to 25 milliseconds. Fast streak ratio is the likelihood that you'll hit a burst of speed when typing um, a word that does not contain any white space. So this is one out of 25 keystrokes I might hit a fast streak. And then intermittent delay ratio uh, this kind of simulates the time where you're typing and you can't really, you know, you're, you're thinking, you're in deep thought, and you pause during typing. Um, so this will be a longer type pause. And then the single keystroke mistake ratio is the likelihood that you'll make a single key mistake. Very simple way of kind of simulating the error of the typist. However, it's not very elaborate. It's just a single keystroke. It'll make a mistake. It'll backspace out of it and then enter the correct keystroke. So very simple. So now I have this set pretty much to type as fast as it can. So let's go ahead and see what it does. Let's close that window and automatically saves. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. And we'll, we'll hit this again. I'd like to also demonstrate the fact that you can minimize typeo. It does not need to be open, which I'd probably also recommend because, you know, you're not going to be showing typeo to your students. So I'm going to go ahead and begin typing by hitting F3. if you really want to impress your friends and pretend you can type that fast that that's about as fast as typeo will go okay let's see what else we can do i'm going to get rid of all of this clean sheet of paper and go ahead and bring back typeo now uh one of the big things you're going to want to do if you're giving a class is obviously you're going to have multiple code examples that you want to provide so I'm going to create a new tab here by clicking the, the new button and let's say I just want to add some notes in here. And I'm going to add another new tab and maybe, I don't know, we could, um, I'll just do another note for tab two, actually three. So now I have three tabs. I could change the names of these if I wanted to. I'm not going to at this time. And this is the real power during an instructional lesson that, that you'll be able to do is I'm going to go ahead and be able to type. And just by hitting the, so I'm going to start off with hitting the F3 button, as I've already displayed. still on control of Visual Studio, so I'm going to hit a carriage return, then I'm going to hit F4, and now I, I added my note, I'm going to hit another carriage return, I'm going to hit F4 again. So it'll go through in sequence of how I ordered my tabs in Typeo, and the F4 key will just send the next block, the next block, the next block. So when I uh, look at Typeo, if I decided that I want my notes to go first in my presentation, what I can do is I'll take this and I'll hit this uh, tab forward button up here and I can move it now t now text one is the beginning and if I were to hit um, actually let's let's change text two as well and if I go back here and hit uh, f3 and hit f4 now my tabs are rearranged, so Hello World is actually the last text that would be sent. Okay, so now we're at the point where, hey, I want to save this for next time I provide some training. So I'm just going to go here and go File Save. haven't uh, opened any files yet, so I'm just going to give it a name of uh, 
demo one and this is going to save this file is a simple XML file so you could actually edit these in some other XML editor if you desired but uh, it, it's very straightforward just the name of the tab and then the content of the tab so once I save this I can just go ahead and go in type yo and do a file open oops there we go and now I have everything just the way I saved it. There's also a save as function, so if you want to, you know, create a different version or, or something, you can go ahead and do a, a save as, and uh, it'll do that. The command window here is basically the same keys that uh, the hotkeys that you'll be using F3 types the currently open when tab sorry uh, f4 will automatically send the text in the next tab 9 f9 will pause f7 will reset and start over again and that's really all there is in the uh, menu structure of type I wanted to show a couple other areas of interest um, before I do that though, I want to slow the typing down and um, this is going to be extremely slow typing. I don't necessarily want to go that far. Um, note, once I have a tab selected, you can use your left and right arrows to do fine grain changes. Oh yeah, this is how it work. Okay, and what I want to show is that uh, there is a capability in Typeo to ignore certain processes if you don't ever want them to be typed to. And by default, I build the major browsers Chrome, Firefox, and IE to uh, in the settings to automatically ignore those. Um, and I'll demonstrate how this works. I'm going to go ahead and begin typing and I'm, then I'm going to launch Chrome which is in my ignore list. So I hit F3, start typing and then I'm going to try and launch Chrome. And if you notice the typing is automatically paused because Chrome, the Chrome process is in my ignore list. To re restart I just hit F9 again. I moved my mouse pointer there so Anyways, um, really simple. Um, as I noted here, you got to be careful where your uh, cursor is at because when you do pausing and, and such, whatever wherever the cursor is at, that's where its uh, insertion point is going to be. So uh, keep an eye on that. I also would like to show you how you can change the processes that you would like to ignore. So I'm going to go ahead and open an Explorer window, which is already uh, in the path of program files, uncanny IT, typeio, and within that folder you'll have a um, typeio config file here. So what that file does is it will uh, allow you to change the apps to ignore. Because within the config file, there's this section called. Um, apps to ignore and then you're going to just want to put the process names just like you'd see them in task manager and then what happens is if those programs number one if they're in the ignore list and they're the open window the most recently open window they'll never get typed to and number two if type recognizes that one of those windows has the focus it will stop typing automatically go into pause mode so very useful if uh, you're having problems with certain processes on your machine that's interfering with Typeo uh, or that y for some reason you need something open while you're providing your instruction just put the process name in there. Now bear in mind Typeo is not going to just altogether ignore it and keep typing in your current window it's just going to pause if one of these windows gets access.
Well, there it is, everybody. That's uh, Typeo in a nutshell. Like I said, real simple application to do a simple function, and uh, I hope you know everyone can use it, and uh, it helps you out in your training lessons. Thanks, and this is Steve K signing out.